Welcome to another T Taylor Family Association Hangout, this one on the proper use of legacy family tree notes. Uh, Ron and I are going to be discussing some historical problems and, uh, so, and some solutions uh, with dealing with the notes field in legacy family tree. Welcome, Ron, and the, you're on. Okay, um, what we're talking about here is uh, trying to clean out the way that notes have been used in the past compared to how they should be used now. The notes field in the past for all kinds of systems, especially PATH, but also some of the other available systems, have been used as a collect-all where everything and, and anything was just put in the notes. And that's not the right way to store things. We want to make sure that data is stored in its proper place. Once it's in the right place, then the database can use that data correctly. So for example, relationships should not be in the notes. I've got William Raymond Gibson on screen here. I'm going to look at his notes. And let's go full screen on that. Here's the notes for, Raymond, for William Raymond Gibson. You'll notice right here in the note, somebody put that R William Ray is the son of John William Gibson and Francis Hannah Clark. That data is not a note. That is part of the database. So what you want to do is get that out of the note and instead, we'll come back here to the database, you can see right here, there's John William Gibson, Francis Hannah Clark. Here's William Raymond Gibson. That's where it's supposed to be. It does not need to be in the note. So there's a general rule here then that anything that, <clears throat> that is used in other uh, database fields doesn't need to be in the note. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, there's a, there's a place for everything in the database and it should be put in that place. But when it shows up in the notes, it becomes redundant. And let's say, this one's a good example. Let's look at, at his record again. So I'm gonna to go to William Raymond, look at his notes. You'll notice that it calls him William Ray. William Ray is not gonna get corrected if somebody fixes William Raymond in the database it has no idea that this information is sitting in the notes. And so because it's in more than one place, this one probably, this William Ray right here, probably will never be fixed. So anyway, we want to take that one out of the notes, just like that. And it doesn't need to be in there. There's a few other ones in here, like alternate birth. That one should be in an event called alternate birth. And here's another one. These Taylor descendant numbers were at one time generated by somebody to show how a given person was connected back to William Taylor and Elizabeth Patrick, or it might be back to Joseph Taylor and Sarah Bess. I can't remember which one it is, but that's not the right place for that information the computer can automatically generate those numbers for anybody in the database. So there's no reason to, to manually calculate those numbers and, and go through the effort of typing them into the notes. It's just a waste of time. The computer can do all that in a matter of seconds for, a, for an entire database of, of 200,000 people. Okay? Great. So, yeah. um, so let's talk, why don't we show about how we'd handle that alternate birth date? Can okay, you, so you... we've got an alternate birth date. I'm just going to copy this thing right out of the notes. So I'm going to do Control X, and then I'm going to save the notes without that stuff in it. Now, here's William Raymond Gibson. I'm going to open him up, and I'm going to add an alternate Sorry, my typing's not too good. An alternate birth. And I'm just going to paste the 
the one in there so I can remember what it looked like. So I've got the date. I'm going to cut that one and put it in the date field. And I'm going to take the location, cut that one and put it in the place field. And then I can just get rid of that. So there's the alternate birth. And it shows up as, a, a alter, as another event. You, see, you can see how it differs from the first one. Now, let me show you the advantage of having that in the database the right way. If we determined that this alternate birth right here was the right birth instead of this one, we can easily switch places by going to Options. We can swap the one that's highlighted with the birth information. Wow, that's good. That's very put that one up here and put the other one back here. So that it not only switched places with those two, but it also maintained the connections to whatever source information was connected to each one of them. So it, it just flipped places between those two. Let me flip it back so you can see how easy it is. So I'm going to go options, swap with the birth. There you go. Wow. So, anyway, so a trick from legacy. <laughs> Thank uh, you. There's, there's there's other types of um, there's other types of alternate births. One is called a disproven birth. So, for example, if if we've got a birth date for somebody that's been used for decades and we've now proven that it's false we can call that a disproven birth and we want that in our database so that somebody when they come across it later doesn't say oh i discovered a new birth date no you didn't you discovered the disproven birth date and we already know about it and that's why we documented it wow that's very good to know ron thank yeah, you and we can have as many disproven and alternates as we want doesn't matter okay great do you, do you know if these uh, well these events some of them can be moved across to uh other systems like uh, uh family search too can't they anything from legacy can be posted up to family search okay and at this point in time you can pull anything from family search down to legacy with the exception of pictures those are not working very well yet for anybody yeah uh, the hope is that eventually we'll be able to pull the pictures off family search into our uh, legacy or roots magic or whatever the the only way that that's a, this is a side subject the only way i've found that you could do that is uh, a family search now has the ability to look at uh or to export the pictures to social media so you can actually uh, yeah. export the picture into a file on your computer and then and then bring it back in step way let's talk a little bit about the other problem that we were that you were seeing about the uh, uh, alternate or additional marriages how did we handle that one uh, let me see if I can find one really quick I'll show you how to find them and this is actually good practice to, to see how to find this kind of stuff. So I'm going to go to search and I'm going to search on the detailed search and I'm going to look in the field called notes general. So that's the generalized notes that came in from PATH or whatever. And I want to search anywhere in the in the field so I'm going to use the word contains. See that? Contains. Mm -hmm. And then I want to put the text that I'm looking for, kind of like a word processor. It's just going to look for this text. So I'm going to say uh, marriages, or let's put in number two because that's kind of how the old ones did it. Let's look for just that. Okay. <laughs> and I, I click create a list. Here's uh, there's 489 people that have a number two in their record somewhere. Let me pick one that that looks. Uh, like a possibility. How about Elizabeth Patrick? So Elizabeth Patrick, there's a lot of information on her. I may not be able to spot that one. Let me let me get somebody else. Here's a good one. So yep. Francis Bray Abel, 
he married, see that right there? It says he married second, Mrs. And she has a couple of other marriages, apparently. And then he married third, this one. And then it says wife number one died. Wife number two died. The, all of those pieces of information should be in the database, not in the notes. Wow. Tons of information that somebody spent time putting in the notes that they could have put directly into the database, and then it would have been useful. Okay. Can we, t can we look at one of these and see if, they're, see if they're already in the database? Yeah. Okay, so let's look at Francis Bray Abel. We can uh, actually we're looking at this thing on the, the results of the search list, which is the same as the name list. Right. So these these tabs over here on the right hand side can be used to look at data in his record. Let's look at detail. There's detail. So he's married to Marguerite Ann Hyde, and he's also married to Thelma Leila Johnston. Doesn't I don't have enough room to show all three here, but I could go to family. And under family, it will show you there's one spouse, there's two spouses, there's the third spouse. So the information is there, so it could be, uh, it looks like this, so it could be deleted from, uh, from, the notes. from the notes. And again, you can take, you can edit the notes right here in this tab. You don't have to go back to the main screen and click on the notes icon and all those things. You can do it right here. So, for example, I'm going to take out that he married Mrs. Melva Vern Warnick Harris. Let's go see what, what that one looked like. So here's the... Here she is. I could edit the wife right there. Or I can edit the marriage right there. See that? Mm -hmm. Yep. And I can I can do anything I want right in this screen. Here's another wife list. This shows all three of the wives. And I could select any one of them. There's Warnick. Let's select that one. And let's go. I didn't stay on the right one, but let's let's go to Melva Verveen. Select her. And then see she has two spouses. So her other spouse, there he is, John George Harris. So she, okay. was, she was a widower. She was a widower. Married. Yes. Yeah, see her. If we click out here on this this hidden tab, there's her first marriage with her children. It looks like I don't have two of them. I just know they are living. Oh, there's four of them. Anyway. That, that's that's a different topic. But here's her first marriage to, to Harris. And then he died in 1968. And then she married in 1971 to Francis Bray Abel. And the reason he was a widower is because his first wife died in 62. His second wife died in 1970. And so then he married this woman here as his third wife. Okay. We could also look at the chronology. So go to, here's Francis Abel. Say chronology. And right here you've got each of the marriages in green. Can you see the green on your screen? I certainly can. Okay, there's marriage one, marriage two, marriage three. And this shows the chronology. So he was 27 when he married the first one. He was 60 when he married the second one. And he was 68 when he married the third one. Wow. So that's what happens if the data is in the database. But you can't do any of this if it's just sitting in the notes. Mm -hmm. Well, Ron, I think we, I hope we can help everyone see how to do this. Uh, and uh, we'd love to have our slicers look very carefully at the di the database that they are responsible for to see uh, if there are any of these kind of problems existing in their particular slice, right? 
That's right. And, and the whole idea for slicers is that everybody doesn't have to do all of the work. They just have to do that little slice for their family and it benefits everyone else. You know, that's, that's wonderful. Well, Ron, thank you very much for this uh, uh, brief uh, presentation about the proper use of legacy family tree notes. And uh, we hope that it is useful to all of you in the organization.